Yahweh, Satan, and the devil. Now regarding Judaism, modern Judaism, which derives mostly from the Pharisee Second Temple period movement, in regards to Satan, they believe that this figure Satan is an angelic being that serves God. His job is to seduce mankind away from God, so that way mankind has free will. So he's doing a good job. Now, Satan is not a name, but rather a title or a term in regards to meaning adversary or accuser. Now, this has even been used to describe Yahweh himself as an adversary against Israel, being angry at Israel. You might find this shocking, but this is within the original Jewish text itself. Now, let's go to 2 Samuel 24.21, and here you'll find Yahweh being angry and against Israel. Here, he is the adversary against Israel, making him Satan. Check this out. This is in 2 Samuel 24. The Lord was angry with Israel once more, and he made David bring trouble on them. So here, he's the adversary, making David bring trouble on Israel. But watch this. This is in 1 Chronicles 21. Satan wanted to bring trouble on the people of Israel, so he made David decide to take a census. Here is a contradiction. So here we have Satan, mistranslated being the adversary that is Yahweh. So let's continue. Now, Yahweh originally served the role as a judgment and a character who delivered divine punishment. He did this in service for his most high father god, El Elyon, who was the original god of Israel. Now, this god was merciful, compassionate and forgiving. Yahweh was the warrior and storm god who also matched the traits of his brother Baal and many traits of Yahweh were indeed stolen from Baal. Now, we find in Numbers 22, an angel is sent as an adversary to stop Balaam. Here, this adversary is a regard to Satan. And when you read Job, keep this in mind because you find that God is in a divine assembly or council of other gods and Satan is among them. So this being an angel or angelic figure in God's court. Now, the original version of this would have been El Elyon discussing with the angels and one of those angels or gods, so sons of El, depending on your particular belief. Originally, it would have been a divine council of gods. One of these gods, Yahweh, or possibly even Baal, served the role of the adversary. So now let's get into the book of Job 1.6. When the day came for the heavenly beings to appear before the Lord, Satan was there among them. Heavenly beings. Satan was there, being an angel. Now originally you would have sons of God transitioned into the angels. So instead of being sons of El, Elion, the most high God, you have a transition into the angels being sons of Yahweh. Now, modern Bibles do not accurately depict what was depicted in the ancient text, which describe polytheism, not monotheism. This was changed in order to bring about a monotheistic religion. Now, in the ancient past, many ancient Jews worshipped multiple gods. They also believed in the existence of many other gods, but chose to worship only one god. They even believed that this chosen one God that they only worshipped had a wife and even had children. Now, this was not uncommon in the ancient past. Many other polytheistic religions had many other gods. Their worshippers would only worship one God as a way of gaining favour of that said deity. And you even find finding favourites within, say, a basketball football team, where a particular person will favour the one player, then said the whole team. Now, you find within Deuteronomy 3. Point, so 32.8 to 9, you find here in the case within the Dead Sea Scroll version and the Greek Septuagint, 
you find here the case of multiple gods. So let's go read from the Dead Sea Scroll version from plate 172B371240. When El Elyon, the Most High, gave the nations their inheritance, he divided all mankind or the sons of man. He set up boundaries for the people according to the number of the sons of God, which was changed into sons of Israel. This is sons of El, El Elyon. For Yahweh, his portion in his people, Israel, his allotted inheritance, meaning that Yahweh inherited Israel from his father God, El, and its people. So here, Yahweh was a lesser God that served his father God, El Elyon, and was similar to Baal, in some Canaanite beliefs, served the role of the accuser, or Satan, serving their father God, El. Baal and Yahweh being brothers, a lot of Yahweh traits were taken from Baal. Now let's go check out the Deuteronomy version from the Greek Septuagint. When the Most High was appointing nations, as he scattered Adam's sons, he fixed boundaries of nations according to the number of divine sons. And his people, Jacob, became the Lord's portion. So Lord here being Yahweh, Most High being El. So dividing Israel with its people amongst to Yahweh. So here we have a transition from multiple gods into one God. El Elyon being the original God of Israel. Yahweh, who was deemed the most important God, was because he was mainly worshipped by a lot of Israelites during this time. Before this, he was worshipped by a lot of sea raiding and raiding and bander and mercenary Canaanites, worshipping their war god. Now let's go read Psalms 82. God presides in the heavenly council, in the assembly of the gods, he gives his decision. Now, assembly of gods, this is El Elyon, ruling over his children, the other gods. Now later on, Yahweh worshippers would merge in Asherah worship in with Yahweh worship and El worship in with Yahweh, stealing the titles of El and stealing El's wife, Asherah, making it Yahweh's wife, who was originally Yahweh's mother. Later on, they would delete Asherah from the records. They would take the traits of El and all his titles and replace them with Yahweh. As the Yahweh's cults were persecuting the other Israelites and other Canaanite tribes to make themselves the most dominant faction. There was even the belief of one God, but being both male and female. This was a belief of a concept of both El and Asherah merged into one. Now, with all this mentioned, the figure we call Satan was a term, a title, in regards to an opponent or an adversary or someone who accused someone or accused another being or who was sent by a being to accuse someone else or another being. So here we have the role of Satan applying to Baal and even Yahweh originally that served their father and patron God El Elyon, the Most High God. So Christians today and Jewish people today that do not worship El, but in fact worship Yahweh, accidentally are worshipping the wrong God. Now in regards to adversary or accuser, this is not necessarily a bad thing, as it was not necessarily a bad thing amongst gods and angels to play this role. Now in regards to the devil, the Jewish people in the ancient past and now, did not believe in the devil. Now, a lot of ancient Jews believed that God was the perfect balance of good and evil, and others believed that God was inherently only good, and evil was a part of man having free will, or was a human invention, or was a part of humans being sinful and having a fall of sorts away from God, and thus brought in evil to the world. Now, many Christians today believe that Satan, the devil, and Lucifer, and the serpent are the same character or same figure, and this is not true. This is false. 
This was mostly popularised during 1667 by Christians inspired by books of the time. Now the belief of Lucifer being the devil was popularised during mistranslations of the 1st century and 2nd century by early Christians, by the Gentiles, so ones who were not a part of the Jewish Christian movements. Now, here, this misquotation was done in Isaiah by them reading 14.12. Let's go read it. King of Babylonia, bright morning star, you have fallen from heaven. In the past you conquered nations, but now you have been thrown to the ground. So they mistranslated this as an angelic being fallen from heaven. This is a king, the Babylonian king, as this king was overthrown by Cyrus the Great, who was made the Messiah of the Jewish people 600 years before Jesus. Now, Lucifer means light bringer, morning star. Jesus was also referred to as the light bringer and morning star. Lucifer said to challenge God. Jesus challenged Yahweh. The only being Jesus called the devil in John 8.44, in response to the Pharisees and Sadducees God, who he called the father of lies, is Yahweh, who he referred to as the devil. This is because Jesus viewed Yahweh as a usurper from that of the true God El Elyon, who Jesus referred to as the Father, who he referred to as Abba. So here we have different factions of Judaism in belief to different gods, different idea of God, and also accepting and rejecting multiple different texts. All right, so let's get into John point eight forty four. But first, this is in John point eight twenty one, I believe. Sorry, twenty two. So the Jewish authority said, "All right, I pointed that out." So Jesus is speaking to the Jewish authorities. So the Pharisees and Sadducees. So their high priest. So Jesus said to them, after they said that they belong to their father. So Jesus said to them, If God really were your father, you would love me, because I came from God and now I am here. I did not come here on my own authority, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to listen to my message. Now here is in 44, 8.44. You are the children of your father, the devil. This is Yahweh, who they responded to being their father. And you want to follow your father's desires from the very beginning. He was a murderer and has never been on the side of truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a liar, he is only doing what is natural to him because he is a liar and the father of all lies. This is dualism. This is Gnosticism. This is Jesus challenging Yahweh, who the Gnostics would refer to as Yadavayof, as the Demiurge. As he lied in the garden, he murdered, and he punished children. He lied a few times. So this is not an angelic, loving being. This is a demonic being. This is not something that is holy. This is why Jesus rejected this being. Now the Essenes, of which most likely Jewish mystics, of which Jesus would have belonged to, a type of Essene, now, because there are many different types of Essenes, of which they worship El Elyon as the head father god. Some also worship Yahweh as El Elyon's son. Now, Zoroastrianism also had a huge part to play on early Judaism and Christianity. Cyrus the Great, a Persian Zoroastrian king, was the Messiah of the Jewish people. The Magi who visited Jesus were also Zoroastrian priests. Now, the scene of Jesus wandering out in the wilderness, being tempted by the devil and Satan, being Yahweh and his servant Satan, an evil angel, if you will, is similar to Zoroaster wandering out in the desert, being tempted by the evil Lord of Darkness to renounce his God and worship him instead, similar to Jesus being tempted by Satan. Now, Satan wanted to be worshipped by Jesus instead of Jesus worshipping his father God. So we have similarities. So we also had Zoroastrians following Jesus that most likely believed that Jesus was a reincarnation of their prophet Zoroaster. 
Now, we also had Greeks following Jesus. We had different types of Jewish communities following Jesus and even Canaanites following Jesus. And thus, when Jesus died, we had a diverse lot of influence being added into Christianity from these diverse followers. So thank you for joining us here on this video discussion. Please leave a comment, like and subscribe and have a lovely day, a lovely night, lots of gnosis and namaste.